Now, his head coach, Matt LaFleur, said they're not necessarily an overly complicated defense, especially on the back end. But what they do, they do, quote, damn well. LaFleur said they play together. They're physical. One of the faster units they'll face this season. And they simply don't give up big plays. But ultimately, Matt LaFleur said it will be critical that his players waste no time when they're out there. He wants them to play fast, vertical, get every yard they can, and maximize every play. A big NFC-AFC showdown between two teams atop their respective divisions on Sunday in Indy. Yeah, can't wait, Stacey. Kyle, I feel like outside of Carson Wentz and mm -hmm. the Eagles being atop the NFC East because it's all dr drama, like the Indianapolis Colts being on top of their division is the least respected team at the top in the NFL. What would a win over the Packers do for the Colts? Yeah, least respected, maybe least talked about. I, I feel like the Colts are outside the club and the velvet rope and they're trying to get in. And I feel like if they win this game, they're in club talked about like they're here it's, Talk when, you about beat, it. when you beat rogers it, he's so famous and he's one of the faces of the league that it's almost like a star making deal like when the bucks slap the packers around all of a sudden the bucks defense is incredible when the vikings beat him now dalvin cook is the mvp it's a huge feather in your cap for the Colts team that I don't really think has the classic signature win. You know, I mean, they, know they beat the Titans, but like, this is a really, really big one. And I'm trying to figure out why no one wants to buy in. And in me, oh, well, it's the Colts. We've bought into countless Andrew Luck and Peyton Manning Colts teams. Um, the team is well built. They run, they play D, they have a cool coach. They, I, the only thing I keep coming back to is just Rivers. Like, I don't think there's still a huge buy-in factor for Rivers. And I think part of it was week one, he was really bad against Jacksonville. And I think people just kind of tuned out and said, oh, Phil Rivers, he's washed, he's over. I think there's a non-buy-in factor and Phil Rivers in a blue jersey, no, no matter what he does every week. But if you beat the guy in the green jersey and we're in number 12, you are in club talked about, you have a private table and those giant Magnum bottles that Nate orders. I think this is a massive, <laughs> massive transition game for them. We have a long resume that we're familiar with, with Philip Rivers. And that's why we oftentimes will see a great game by him. Really good. There's games where he's been extremely accurate, looking like one of the best quarterbacks in football. But then we'll look back to history and we'll think to ourselves, okay, yeah. well, we know there's going to be a game where Philip Rivers is going it's to It's always so loaded. Right. He's going to put his team in a bad position. Um, for this game, it's not necessarily about Philip Rivers for me. It's about that Colts defense up against Aaron Rodgers. Mm -hmm. It's interesting because the Colts defense, the fourth lowest blitz team. Why is that important? Because they're saying we're going to get pressure with Buckner. We're going to get pressure with Houston. We're going to get pressure with our front guys. And then we're going to make sure that we put guys in windows to make it difficult for Aaron Rodgers. I've always felt like if you give Aaron Rodgers time, he's going to cook you. Now, on the flip side, if you blitz him and he gets the ball out fast, he's going to cook you. So will this be a game where the Colts say, you know what, let's dial up pressure more than we usually do because we're at the bottom third in the NFL. I'm interested to see that matchup mm -hmm. between Matt LaFleur mm -hmm. and that Colts defense. Mm -hmm. Who's going to win? Because something has to give. Mm. It, four o'clock window, Fox has two games, Dallas and Minnesota or Green Bay or Indianapolis. If you had asked the Fox executives back in, in March last year, all right, Dallas, Minnesota or Green Bay, Indianapolis at Lucas Oil, who are you going with? The whole country is getting this this game instead of Dallas, Minnesota. Okay. So, I mean, you've got Joe Buck and Troy Aikman going into Lucas Oil, probably for the first time since Andrew Luck yeah. was the quarterback, maybe yeah. even first time since Peyton Manning, to be honest. This is the game. Like, at national television, it's going to be freezing cold all over the East Coast, and everyone's going to be on their couch at 4 o'clock on Sunday watching the Indianapolis Colts led by Bobby Okariki <laughs> and, 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 you know, these guys, Xavier Rhodes. Wait, wasn't he a Viking? Wait a second. I don't know who this player is. Like, no name defense. Zach Pascal. Zach Pascal and but, he, but they're healthy now. Like he's, you know, now Philip Rivers has healthy weapons around him. He didn't all year. Yeah, and I, I think this is going to be their coming out party, whether good or bad. Like they could, they could absolutely do what they did against the Ravens the last time they had a national yeah. big game, and they didn't show up on offense, and the defense did their best. But this to me is like, all right, if the Colts win and they beat Rodgers and Philip Rivers puts on a show, we got a cool storyline. We've got Breeze and Brady as these old war horses, but yet Rivers, the one we didn't talk about at all all offseason, yeah. is the one who's taking the lead. Um, I'm interested to see what we get because Bobby Okariki, I like saying his name, so it's Pat McAfee. Okariki. Bobby Okariki, he's a really good linebacker and then a lot of good young defenders on that They're course. a really complete team. Like, if I'm a top dog in the AFC, if I'm the Chiefs, well, you've talked about this with me, Nate, on the show, I don't want to face the Colts. I don't want to face them. And this is now going to, if they win, that's two big games that they've strung together, one under the, under the bright lights of Thursday Night Football over the Titans, where Philip Rivers has looked the best as he has all year with a healthy group of complementary pieces. 
There, we're on to something with this Colts team. Question quickly, where's Andrew Luck? Like, how did he fall out? Like, he's off the map completely. I don't know. Somebody, how did he do that? Somebody. He's a very famous guy, and he has a famous name. He doesn't get recognized. Nobody's taking selfies with he's him. He's off the grid. He doesn't have a social media. I think he shaved the beard, and that's why? No, we don't, we I don't think he grew it out. That's why we're training the I just feel like pictures. for him to go, for us to not have some, like, oh, I'm in the, the grocery store. You Haven't know. seen him. Giant thing with a, bike, with a bike, nothing like I that. I see a yeah. Jeff Fisher photo on Twitter once a week. I can't Sasquatch. see an Andrew Luck one. Yeah. <laughs> uh, what's going on with the Giants? Yeah. Here's my second question of the day. So the Giants had some news yesterday. You might have seen it online or seen it on our network. Uh, they fired their offensive line coach, Mark Colombo. The story that first came out was that there was a physical altercation. I've spoken with sources uh, with the Giants. It wasn't a physical altercation, but there certainly was an argument. They were hiring another offensive line coach, Dave Du. He's from the Patriots. They call him Gouge. I can't pronounce his name. Dave okay. Gouge, whatever it is. Great coach, been around forever. He's been bouncing around the league. They hired him to kind of assist. Mark Colombo, the offensive line coach, wasn't as uh, fond of that news. Joe Judge had a debate with him, I would say. So they say. fought. They didn't fight. There was no punches thrown, and yet okay. it was heated. And now their offensive line coach, who after winning two straight games, is out the door. But the big story in the, in the NFC... So there's a rumor that there was fisticuffs? There was a rumor. There wasn't um, fisticuffs. But the big story is, like, Joe Judge, like, firing a coach because of an argument. Like, mm -hmm. people are talking that Joe Judge is, like, laying down the line here. And it's a big story in this city. I'm curious to hear what you guys think of what was just discussed. Well, didn't he, didn't he have that same type of philosophy when they came to the players mm. I'm not going to say any guys names it's it's the team over individuals and if you're not going to do it our way then it is indeed the highway I respect it I don't know what happened and I'm not taking sides well, they hired someone else to be an assistant offensive line coach and the offensive line coach was not happy with it that's mm. really the story then he argued and judge said get out of here it, it, pack your bags okay so I can appreciate that for one reason oftentimes coaches will say one thing to the players and implement it and then go by a completely different set of rules with the coaching staff. So you have players seeing dudes come in like a revolving door and you have chaos upstairs. And, and let me be very clear, players know exactly what's going on upstairs. We're like teenage kids. You knew when coaches we're, were fighting? Yes, of course we did. We knew what coaches didn't like each other. Mm. We knew what coaches hated each other. It's like a 15 year old kid walking around the house. Mm -hmm. They may not act like they're listening, <laughs> but they hear everything. When mommy and daddy's arguing, they know. So the same thing with players. You might sit back, act like we're not paying attention, but of course we know what's going on. I like the fact that he's sticking to his gun and saying, I'm going to lay down the law on the team and on the front office. Do you have any details? I'd be willing to bet my life that Joe Judge said it's my way or the highway. In the <laughs> I would just be willing yeah. to bet. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff that when the fight rumor came out, which we shouldn't even justify anymore because it was quickly. I was like, he fought Colombo? Oh, like I, big. Six, Columbo's eight. Six, eight, 325. <laughs> Columbo used to be in a heavy metal band with all offensive linemen. Like he's got a whole history. And I do have to say, Kim Jones had a tweet that like was wildfire where she said, I do believe believe Colombo called Judge, his boss, one of the dirtiest words in the English language. And then there's 6,000 replies of people trying to guess it, which <laughs> I have my own sure guesses, but I sure won't. That's lovely for Kim to look I, at. Great. <laughs> but she says some of them are funny. She's like, he called him Adam Gase? I'm like, all right, that's not funny. Um, <laughs> I would just say on the football side of things, the Giants are playing really well. So it's almost like if, if, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, don't rock the boat. I would be interested to see how the Giants running game comes out this weekend, because they got a thing going here, and they may have a home playoff game with a new offensive line coach. How often were there disagreements in your NFL career? Because every I feel week. like if, so if there's, but, but coaches don't get fired every week. That's my point. If I'm a fan and you're telling me that there's fights every week, well, with the way some, I would and I don't like that he, I would, that he got fired. I would fired. never call for anybody to lose their job. You guys know me. But with the way some teams are playing, maybe coaches should get fired more often. I just like the fact that they got into it. Think about that. Judge versus Colombo.